June 3rd Town Council okay. meeting. Um, Councilor Babine did have to go home. He's rather, rather under the weather. Um, so, uh, but we are joined with Councilor Council Katerina <laughs> instead. <laughs> so we're on to item number four, which is general public comment. And you can head up to the podium, state your name, address, and you have three minutes. My name is Mike Doyle. I live on Shady Lane in Falmouth. I'm here to uh, tonight to discuss a bill that I have from the town hall for Bernstein, Shiro, Sawyer, and Nelson, where the town has spent $3,927 to have an attorney look at apparently emails that I'm not going to receive because my sources say there are hundreds, if not thousands, of emails that have been taken out of the 1,200 that are currently being discussed to be provided to me by attorney Mark Franco. And I don't know how much money is, how much billing has been submitted to Maine Municipal Association by the town, but I'm, I'm going to ask for that information. I've got a request in to Toady for that. But uh, I'm going to guess it's five or $10,000 on top of this. So whoever paid a $3,927 property tax or more, that was wasted by having an attorney look at stuff that I should be able to get, but has been taken out of the pile according to my information. Now, the situation that we have here is that two men came to the police department two years ago and filed a complaint against the business owner in Scarborough, and they can't even get a copy of that complaint. The, one of the men's lawyers can't get a copy of the plate. I can't get a copy of the plate because apparently it's not <coughs> a complaint that's under investigation. And for two years, this gentleman was told that the investigation had been terminated, but there was no investigation. So either there's an investigation going on or it's terminated. If it's terminated, I'd like to get a copy of that complaint. Now, Scarborough Council has uh, something in common with ISIS uh, Muslim terrorists. They don't like Excuse to me. make Excuse fun of... They don't, let me finish. No, don't let people make fun of them, uh, hold, hold, and you don't let me have freedom <laughs> so, of speech. And I that's appreciate very your similar. freedom, and you're well aware of the rules of decorum. Right, and I'm the freedom of speech out of extends order. to making cartoons okay. of, of uh, Mohammed that they don't permit, and you don't permit freedom of speech, so you have something in common with them. Disgusting. Let me All finish. right, you're out of order. Let me finish. You're out of order. No, down. We're done. Out of order. Okay, I won't go on with that. But the no, point, I'm, no. the I've point, I, want, the point I want to finish you is that you are being asked to stop. I know, but the point I want to finish with is that it's rude for the councilors yeah. to read and removed. write while I'm speaking. You're done. Yeah. Done. Removed. You shouldn't be reading and writing while someone's speaking. I was writing notes on what you were saying, I'm so I could look at it. So, anybody else wish to speak? Saying none. Close general public comments. Item number five, minutes of the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor? That's a vote. Item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are none at this time. Item number seven is treasurer's warrants. I will sign them later in the meeting. Order num on to order number 15-038 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to chapter 1002 Shellfish Conservation Ordinance. And again, this is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on this matter? And seeing none, I will close the public comment and pleasure of the council. Uh, Move for approval. Yeah, <coughs> second, please. And is there any, um, well, before we go into discussion, if you would, Tom, would you just recap this item for us? I will try, but I uh, yeah. would ask either sure. Dr. Hayes or. or uh, <laughs> The town clerk, uh, essentially there were a number of changes that have come through the Shellfish uh, Conservation Commission uh, that relate to changes directed by Department of Labor um, directives uh, having to do with what used to be mandatory conservation time. Um, and I guess I should defer to you as to what the solution to that was. Uh, Tody or Peter? I'm not sure I'm going to do any more justice to it. Okay. I, mean, I think the issue became they were requiring, in order to get the license, there was a requirement that they would do some conservation time. And because of child labor laws and other things, there was a test case that suggested that wasn't the right place to be. Um, so this really just deals with adjusting that, taking that requirement out of it, making it a voluntary 
um, activity that they can do if they want to do. So it really is an attempt to try to still, if they want to do the conversation conservation work, they can, but it's not required in order to get the license. I think it's in kind of a nutshell. It's really trying to recraft it to be in compliance with the spirit of, of the child labor law. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So it has to do with the age. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought it was. Yep. Um, does anybody else mm -hmm. have any? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I certainly support this. Um, there was some great. <laughs> they can get a room full of fishermen to agree. It's fantastic. Um, it, it was a process. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it stemmed, it, it, we were fortunate not to run into this in our own community. It stemmed from another community and, and so taking notice that, that that was going on somewhere else. Um, they've strived to make efforts to, to fix ours so that we can be in compliance with all the child labor laws and, and some of these other lovely rules that we have. So with that, um, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. Next item is order number 15-041 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the request for a combined massage establishment, massage therapist license from Marie Ann Demeter, located at 7 Oak Hill Terrace. And again, this is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on this item? And seeing none, I will close the public hearing and pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. And any discussion? Seeing none, I'd just like to take an opportunity to say welcome to Scarborough. <laughs> and all those in favor? And that is unanimous. Next item is order number 15-042, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on request for a liquor license from DJIJR Inc. <laughs> doing, doing business as Salty Bay Seafood Takeout, located at 68 Jones Creek Drive. And again, this is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak? And seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. And any discussion? Sure. Ed. Uh, I just have a question. Salty Bay is a takeout seafood place. So mm -hmm. is, is this just you go up to the window and you get a bottle of beer? No. You take it back to your car or what? It's good. Yes. To, to, I was going to say, would you mind? Um, Actually, they have a, um, they're remodeled. And yeah. The, and the, seat, the seating is inside hmm. in the bar, so that's an inside. Oh, they're expanding. Yes. Yeah. I've been there. Um, they have a beautiful spot outside that overlooks hmm. um, the harbor and, um, it's not very big. It's it's really it's rather small, but it's beautiful. They've done a, a remarkable job down there, and I think it's just really expanded some of their business. Yeah. And they're trying to cater a little bit more to instead of people just taking out um, and trying to find a place to sit down there, they're sort of inviting people to. I think it's a wonderful thing. It's beautiful. They've done a great job. So it's not just takeout anymore. So is okay. the area inside? Yes, inside. they have an enclosed area now. Is it? Part and there's of a the, part of an outside. Is it part of the, the main building there? Is it in the back of the building? No, I believe it's right in the front. Yeah, yeah you can oh, really? see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? No, sounds good. All right. Well, Jessica's two cents, even if it's in the window, I guess I really don't care. <laughs> so it's a nice <laughs> view. So um, it's well, really nice. <laughs> it is. We've, and I think they're attracting down. a lot more people <coughs> too because mm. people, there's a place for them to really sit now. And, right. it, you know, they don't have to eat it in their car or drive it all the way home. So I think they're attracting more business, mm. which is always great for us anyway. So. so with that, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. There is no old business at this time. So we are into new business, which is order number 15-043. Act on the request as follows. Be it ordered that the town council, following the request made by the treasurer, grants a tax abatement of the 2013-2014 taxes specially assigned to FLL, FLP LLC in the amount of $16,542.50, along with interest and fees in the amount of $1,011.26. Such taxes securing collection of the special assessment of the proportional cost of the utility improvement installed in the Haggis Parkway Development District benefiting the FLP LLC property and the amount of the abatement reflecting the correct frontage and area of the FLP LLC.
LLC parcel used in determination of the special assessment to appropriate appropriation development costs for the Hygis Parkway utility improvements. The treasurer, tax collector, and assessor to also prepare and issue such other documents as also may be required. That was a long one. <laughs> you tell the lawyer about it. So, um, with that, <laughs> does anybody wish to speak on this item? And seeing none, we'll uh, if you wouldn't sure. just bring us into this item yeah, a little bit, Tom. Yeah, break it down. Yeah, you can tell a lawyer <laughs> wrote this. I'll do my best to uh, dissect it a bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Properties along Haggis Parkway were assessed uh, essentially sewer assessment fees for infrastructure the town paid for and installed that benefited their property significantly. Uh, Actually, this was the subject of a lawsuit back when it was initially proposed, and there was a final resolution that involved engineers and engineers and lawyers uh, coming up with a, a methodology everyone could live with that involved front foot, a number of front feet on the parkway, and lot size. Um, to this day, many of the folks that have these sewer assessments associated with their land still don't believe the methodology was right. Uh, in this particular case, um, this is a subsequent owner from the original owner, but uh, the sanitary district actually uh, built a pump station, if you can picture it, on, on the upper end of the parkway, closer to golf and ski. Yeah. Uh, so that, that pump station came out of this property, the parent yeah. property, and so the front foot, foot assessment went down. So we simply used the same methodology, recalculated based on the now front foot assessment, and it came into a lower number. And because the sewer assessments actually uh, were filed as a supplemental tax on the property to secure our interests, and they're aged to the point it's only the council that can provide the abatement. Uh, no one administratively has that authority. Thank you, Tom, for bringing us into the history of that. And any discussion? Did we have a first and a second? I'm sorry. I didn't. Uh, so no. moved. Second. All right. Now we can have discussion. <laughs> oh, anybody? All right. Well, seeing. Well, guess, oh, Peter. And, and Tom, just understanding for you, you're comfortable with this that this is the yes. fair and right thing to do, and it's just it's it's because that that footprint was taken over by yes. the sewer district, whatever. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's basically uh, just calcul recalculating based on the original on the new, formula on, on the new footprint yeah. or new frontage, excuse me. So, though the many of the owners would like us to blow that all up and recalculate, um, this does not deviate from the methodology the that methodology. everyone else. Uh, has to live with. Great, thank you. If, if this was known in the very beginning when this was being done, would the allocation to all the other property owners been been different? In other words, should this seventeen thousand dollars really be distributed among the other? No. Um, Why? Well, first off, uh, the town, right or wrong, the. Council at the time decided that 60% of the overall cost was town expense funded by tax dollars. So I think 40% of the expense was allocated across the properties. Uh, I believe the methodology, uh, all of this money should go back to this property. Um, I, I believe this is correct. Uh, luckily, Rob Crawford um, was part of the initial assessments and continues to be part of this conversation. We have great continuity in that respect. And it is very complicated. I'll be the first to admit. All right. Anybody else? No. <clears throat> All right. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> On to the next item is order number 15-044, act to authorize the town manager to renew the parking agreement with the Higgins Beach Inn. And does anybody wish to speak on this item? And seeing none. And Tom, will you please Certainly. introduce this? Yes, um, I negotiated the first lease, <clears throat> and that was back in 2011. Um, that lease has been extended and is now back before you, and we're proposing a five-year extension, further extension. Essentially, when the town came into ownership and operational responsibility of the Higgins Beach parking lot, part of that property, um, there was a separate little lot to the, just the right of the bathhouse, if you can picture it. Uh, it's very close uh, to the abutters, and for that reason alone, it is not conducive for public parking because of noise and such. Uh, that decision was made really upon purchase. 
And so we asked ourselves, what do we want to do with it? Um, and the Higgins Beach Inn in, in the summer has a need for employee parking. And so we've negotiated uh, a quid pro quo uh, relationship whereby they get use of that space, most of it anyway, we reserve out two of them, uh, for their employees in exchange for them locking the gate each night. And that saves us money by not having staff on site and responsible and, um, and almost without exception, it's worked uh, wonderfully well. And so we're proposing that we continue that relationship. For those on finance, you might recall there was conversation with Mr. Golfer regarding an automated gate system. Oh, yeah. Mm. If we have that ability, we wouldn't need these services necessarily. But at this juncture, uh, there, are, there are ways to get out of this should we, should we need or want to. Um, but right now, I think it makes sense to lock up and have some comfort and certainty that we uh, operationally will be able to continually, consistently shut that gate in the evenings. Um, for those that live adjacent to the lot, there have been lots of stories historically about people carousing at night or coming in early in the morning. And it's a dense neighborhood, so uh, just a car door shutting can be uh, bothersome to the neighbors, much less any, any foolishness. So. Uh, it's worked very well having their staff um, consistently close the gate at nine. Oh. Okay, um, I just had a quick question. This actually came up in one of my meetings. What are the hours that he opens and closes? Does anybody know? Well, the open hours are dawn till dusk, so okay. that will vary slightly, but it's usually around nine o'clock. That the, he closes in it? Okay. Good. Just a good question. With, with this lease transfer ownership, I mean, it, there's isn't the Higgins Beach for right. sale or? Is in it? the process for sale, so is it, huh. is it with the current owners or does it follow the property? Um, it, uh, there is a provision uh, that it can be assigned. Successors and assigned. Yeah, yeah, paragraph okay. six, okay. assignment and subletting. Okay. Uh, it requires our written consent. Yeah. Uh, and I would expect it would be a very important feature for a future buyer. Uh, oh, for the same yeah, sure. Great. No? Uh, are the owners of the Higgins Beach Inn? Uh, fine with the continuing the arrangement? Yes, in fact, uh, the lease that's provided as part of your agenda has their signature already attached, so they've already signed it. They've already signed. Good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any no, it sounds like a good... I mean, to me, it, um, just looking at, and the questions the rest of you raised were really good, because um, it, it looks like you can get out of it with a 90-day notice, um, and there are all sorts of things built in that protect the town. Uh, with this, so to me, it sounds like a good plan for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so, just to be on the safe side, um, Kate, you first. Did, did you first this? And who was our second? Jim Marie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All right. And saying none, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. Hey, we're on a roll tonight. <laughs> Where are we doing? It's fun. <laughs> All right, so the next item is order number 15-045, act on the request to ratify the collective bargaining agreement between the town of, of Scarborough and the Scarborough Professional Dispatchers Unit of Scarborough Fighter Fighter Association IAFF number 3894. And does anybody wish to speak on this item? And seeing none, close comment, and can I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. And um, Tom, would you give us a quick overview of this? If, uh, if you don't mind, I, I would like to defer to the HR director for oh, that purpose. Oh, absolutely. If she took the time to be here, she might as well speak. <laughs> right? Put her in the hot seat. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Um, I'm excited and pleased to report that we reached a tentative agreement with the Scarborough Professional Dispatchers Bargaining Unit. Unit. It's a three-year contract for the period of July 1, 2015 to June 30th, 2018. Um, the proposal results in a, in a savings for the budget, which is outstanding. The COLA increases that we agreed to are 2% in year one. Two and a half in year two and two and a half in year three, as well as some changes to the health plan structure, um, eliminating the POSA plan, which is the more robust plan, and introducing a PPO 500 plan, which has a higher deductible and lower premiums, and um, maintaining the POSC plan, which is our primary plan. The membership has recommended, excuse me, the union reps have recommended to the membership to adopt the plan, and it's in front of you today for consideration as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, discussion. And Ed. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not in favor of this. And the reason I'm not in favor of it is this is an opportunity for us as a town to start changing our contractual agreements and changing the way that we deal with cost of living increases. Um, the budget that we approved two weeks ago included $820,000 in cost of living increases. It amounts to 1.4% of the total budget. Um, and yet, from April of 2014 to April of this year, the actual cost of living went down two tenths of one percent. Um, we've got to we've got to change the way that we do this. We're going to continue to do it. Either that, or you change what you're calling it. Don't call it a cost of living increase or adjustment. That's all I get to say. Okay. Anybody else? Jim Marie? Um, I certainly respect. Councilor Blaze's position on this and uh, um, the arguments on <coughs> cost of living increases, of course, COLAs depends on who you ask and which cost of living increase you're looking at because there are a number of them out there. Um, Department of Labor alone has several. Uh, when you're talking about locking in for three years uh, with employees, for all we know, the cost of living could jump tomorrow and then they would be behind the eight ball because they locked into a 2.0 or 2.5 percent increase. I don't have any problem with uh, these particular COLA increases. I think they're in line with what's going on pretty much in the private sector um, with what I'm familiar with and certainly the um, renegotiating the insurance is huge because of the insurance costs are more apt to increase, particularly with the plan that they had in place before them, what they've negotiated. So I think they've bargained in good faith and have come up with a, a, a good contract here. Anybody else? All right. Uh, Peter. Yeah, and I, I guess <clears throat> my ten, two cents worth is, is I, I do appreciate um, Councilor Blaze's comment, and I, and I agree, and I think going forward, we probably should have some conversations about how we want to structure contracts in the future. Times times are different. Um, I think it is an opportunity to create a different pathway forward. I, I guess where I am, this has been negotiated in good faith. This is where we are. Um, so I'd like us to kind of put this on our table to kind of consider and think about going forward for where we how we do these types of things in the future. What? Okay. I'll add mine. Um, I also agree with Councillor Blaze in the sense that um, I hear totally hear what he's saying and I, a lot of it makes sense um, but along with um, Councillor Katarina um, and Councillor um, I just I, I think we went forward with this with good faith like everyone has mentioned um, I think that's a big deal um, and I think it needs to be honored at this point um, but I do think it's something that we have to keep in mind, and it's a good point. Um, unfortunately, like Councillor Katarina said, we never know what's going to happen from year to year, um, and there are different levels and, and different cost of living um, structures, so that does make it a lot more difficult, but I think there is a way for us to um, find a way to save more money, which is something that we desperately need in this town right now. But I, will, I do plan on supporting this. Anybody else? Bill. Uh, the information we had from the uh, uh, human resource director is that they do benchmark uh, the uh, different towns that would be valid comparisons with us and that this is consistent with those benchmarks so that uh, we, are, we are in line with other communities. Uh, I think the I'd be interested in evaluating Councillor Blaze's point more in a philosophical sense of how we go about negotiating rather than in the context of this contract. So I'm going to vote for this contract, but I'd be open to having it discussed amongst the council. I agree. And anybody else? All right. Time for me to chime in. Um, 
I, I do appreciate um, some of the comments that were, were offered by the other councillors. Um, certainly, I, I'm not opposed to revisiting how we come to negotiate and you know how, how we get to those those places. I do intend to support um, this particular contract as negotiated, um, and for, for the benefit of. As, you, as most of you heard earlier, um, there, there were concessions that were offered. I'm a little less concerned about the 2.5 in the COLA, knowing that um, everybody now has come down completely off from that higher insurance period. So, you know, concessions are just that. They're, they're, they're give, they're take. Um, and, and certainly, um, I'm, I'm very appreciative of not only the hard work from staff to, to try to negotiate this for, for us, um, but also um, very appreciative, um, let's face it, to, to our staff and our employees that, that were willing to um, kind of meet us in the middle a little bit and work with us. Um, so with that, all those in favor? And that's um, one, two, three, four, five. And opposed is at. So item number eight is non-action item. Um, we have none. So item number nine, standing and special report, committee reports and liaison reports. And I think I started down there last week, so we'll start down here. Thank no you. no committee meetings what? since we last met. Jim Marie? Uh, I would just remind people that this weekend there's a shir what they call a charrette <laughs> at Higgins Beach, the Long Range Planning Committee, and the um, planning department is sponsoring it. It will be, I believe, all weekend. Stop in if you would like to... Uh, Put in your two cents worth of how you think Higgins Beach should be developed as far as zoning and whatever. And I certainly encourage all Higgins Beach residents, whether you're just summer residents or full-time residents, to, to stop in this weekend. And I believe, I'm going to look at my two Higgins Beach buddies here. You have the potluck and whatever this weekend, too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can come and have potluck and chime in. All right? Silent auction. <laughs> oh, silent auction, too. Silent auction yes. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't have any other reports. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to get Ed to feed me and the kids at the potlucks. For <laughs> <laughs> and he said no. Oh. And I was like, that's not very, that's not very Higgins Beach like. Um, I'm, I don't have any reports tonight, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, last week, uh, Mike Shaw hosted a a meeting of a lot of the public works directors from the towns oh. involved with the uh, Eastern Trail. Uh, he put on a little barbecue down in his building there. <laughs> and we, we sat down and, and just discussed how they go about doing it and the problems that they encounter and everything like that. And I think it was, uh, uh, I think everybody there enjoyed it. Uh, they got a lot out of it. Um, there certainly is a lot of concern about the money that's required to maintain the trails because mm -hmm. maintaining the trail is a is a town obligation, um, and a lot of the towns feel that uh, you know it's money that they can't really spend. So um, I think they'll have another one of these next year. But uh, all in all, I think it was. Uh, a good meeting and everybody got a lot out of it. Um, the other night I attended the planning board meeting and they had their first request for a site plan review for a transmission tower. Oh. And it was interesting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was it interesting. Was. It's gonna uh, get more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's the first one yep. and nobody really Felt totally comfortable with what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a lot of concern that is the person that's applying for it telling the truth? And how do we know that they're telling mm -hmm. the truth? And of course, the town, I think, has gone out and hired a, a, a person to uh, 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 advise the town on the mm -hmm. uh, applications and so on and so forth. Um, they probably discussed this for maybe a half an hour to 45 minutes and around 10.30 they decided, to, hey, let's call it a night and we'll continue the next meeting. Uh, so I'll let you know what happens at the ne next meeting, but it is, it should be an interesting 
uh, process. Uh, going through the first one, the board is going to be very, very uh, particular as to how they go about doing this. They're going to want to make sure that they do it right um, and that they learn how to ask the right questions. So uh, I think that's what they're struggling with now, and it should be interesting. That's it. Thank you. Peter? Yeah, just two quick things to report. The um, Shellfish Conservation Committee met. Um, not a whole lot going on other than they are got some of the funds that they do get. They're going to actually buy some new new types of crap traps. So that was kind of the, the topic of conversation. And then, two, the second thing to report is the Transportation Committee met last week. And actually, it was kind of fascinating. They actually had some of the folks come in that work on the traffic lights. And I never realized our traffic lights in these towns are smart. They actually can sense cars and they actually change their timing. They're kind of self-regulating. So it was really a fascinating conversation, but they really have talked about really trying to improve tra traffic flow during the next several months at three major intersections. One's Oak Hill, Hi. one's Holmes and Payne Road, and the other is Dunstan Corner. So. But it was just a really fascinating conversation around how they look at traffic, how they coordinate the lights and other things. So that's, on a lighter note, that kind of summarizes those activities. Thank you. All right. And um, Appointments Committee did meet this evening. We have a few names we'd like to post. Um, first one being Benjamin Keller to the Conservation Commission um, with a term of, of 2016 mm -hmm. Historic Preservation Committee. We'd like to post Sharman Kavitsky, Craig Frederick, Becky Delaware, and Jessica Holbrook um, with terms to expire December of 2017. Senior Advisory Committee as a full voting member, um, Bud Hansen, who God bless, serves on <laughs> <laughs> quite a few things. Um, so thank you very much. We, we appreciate you, Bud, and you have a term to expire in 2016. Um, so there's that for there. Um, it's not necessarily um, a liaison report, but I thought I would just share um, an event that I went to. Um, I recently was invited to come down to the um, police department while they had their um, appreciation evening for their VIPs. And um, there's a couple of things I thought I'd like to share with, with you as, other, as fellow counselors and, and with the um, people at home. Um, First of all, I just want to express um, my absolute heartfelt gratitude to these folks. Um, what, a, what a wonderful job they do in, in serving this community and, and helping. And, you know, it, it's, it's such a blessing to have folks like that that are just, you know, willing to give of themselves and, and, and really ask for, for nothing in return. Um, with that, they were recognized. Um, several of them received... Um, uh, because of the hours served, which are were staggering, um, uh, a presidential award for volunteerism. Um, there are, um, well, I'm going to go through the list real quick. Um, Donna Dickinson has um, provided 100 hours of volunteer service. Ed Libby has provided 208 hours of service. Jim Nappy has provided 125 hours of service. Duncan Perry has given 106 hours of service. Nancy Roderick has given 105 hours of service. Ralph Wink has given 223 hours of service. And the grand prize winner, Ralph... Stretch you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 335 hours of, of, of volunteers. And that, that is phenomenal. And um, so if I, if I could, i just point out, um, in, in total, there are 12 vol volunteers. The volunteers amount to 1,372 hours that they give this community. Mm -hmm. And there is an actual, um, um, for the, those that love money, <laughs> um, it's actually a cost avoidance for, for us um, of $34,300. Wow. Um, so, again, that, that's a phenomenal program. I know it's um, widely popular. There have been other communities that have modeled programs after Scarborough's. Um, so, again, I just, you know, my, thank you. If, uh, you know, what, what a wonderful group and, and what a wonderful evening. So I was very, very happy to be able to, I couldn't stay long. I had other things to do, but um, it was very happy to, to part, um, be able to see that and participate in that. So with that, on to our next one, which is Town Manager's Report. Thank you. Uh, just to pick up on that point of VIPs, I'm not sure who benefits more. Um, 
particularly the two Ralphs, whom I know the best. <laughs> I'm pleased they're both named Ralph, because I'm, I'm never quite sure. Um, <laughs> but they truly seem to be enjoying themselves. Always have a smile. Okay. These are these are the gentlemen that you probably see at the polls and right. all over town. Any community event, uh, they're there with a yeah. smile and doing a great job. So they, they re represent the city <clears throat> or town very well. Um, I don't normally do this, but I wanted to speak to a comment that came from the podium tonight. And the bill that was referenced, just for the record, had to do with uh, our legal costs associated with the defending a lawsuit brought by Mr. Doyle himself. Yeah. And uh, that was to uh, do the research and file initial briefs. That suit defense is now transferred over to our insurance company, uh, and we have nothing to do with it. But uh, I just wanted, for the record, to, just to mention what he was referring to. Um, a couple of points of interest. Uh, without budget being front and center for me these days, I have been able to get back uh, onto a number, number of other things. Uh, I have had some success on the tax acquired property list, kind of working through that. It's slow, but it's positive. Uh, Tody's been a great help to help uh, kind of catalog that, and um, we'll continue to work our way through that list. I wanted to relate uh, the, the really astounding uh, participation and success with voting this year on the, on the school budget uh, validation vote. Um, as of today, we're well over 600 absentee ballots already issued, wow. uh, most of which are returned. Uh, and just a reminder, tomorrow is the last day for open right. absentee voting. Uh, for Friday and Monday, it's for special circumstance only. So it's quite likely that we'll get past 700 um, uh, ballots cast by absentee, which is remarkable. Just to put that in perspective, if you total up the total number of absentees cast in all, sub all previous validation votes, it's 483. So uh, clearly the word has been out, and I know the council's received some comment from a, a resident that we should be doing more. Uh, I think this kind of validates the fact that the folks are aware of it and they're actually mm -hmm. participating, and we expect a banner turnout on Election Day itself as well. Uh, just to make sure no one forgets this, uh, voting will be here at Town Hall in these chambers from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, June 9, if you're not able to make it before then. Uh, lastly, uh, or a couple of quick things. Habitat closing was last week, which was a tremendous event. Uh, I've had the luxury uh, and privilege of being part of this process. Uh, I say that with a smile somewhat mm -hmm. and look at Jessica. Uh, I think we've both been at this since shovel. the bitter beginning. Uh, but it was a very, uh, it was a great event. Uh, we have uh, Grondon under contract for the sewer work and have negotiated that work will be done in October, early November timeframe. And there will be a more formal, more festive groundbreaking ceremony. We'll be certain to get that word out to you. Uh, just today, we found out uh, we may need to do some work on the retaining wall down at Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. This holds up on the back side of the skate park, if you will. And we've observed the fact that it's starting to lean a bit, and it seems to be getting worse. So we're in the mm -hmm. process of getting some mm -hmm. professional opinion, and I'll keep you posted in that regard. And just lastly, to uh, foreshadow meetings for next week, there is a finance committee meeting on the 10th, June 10th at 4, and a rules and policies committee the following day uh, on June 11th at 4. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And on to council member comments. So we'll start on the other end with Peter. <laughs> Good evening. Um, and I guess I'll just kind of pick up on, on what Tom was talking about um, around the budget and where we are. I mean, I've worked and lived in this community for 30 years. Um, there's a lot of energy this year, and what I've been somewhat surprised by is the intensity of, of the energy on both sides. And I just, I hope people come out and vote. I hope people who get engaged and informed about the budget. But I want everybody to remember we're all part of a community, and everybody has a right to their own opinion. So be civil, be respectful. But I have some of the things that I've seen happening the last couple of weeks have really concerned me about our community. So, you know, it, it's a really emotional issue for a lot of folks. There's lots of information. So please just respect other people's opinions, be civil, be respectful, and let's m move forward as a community. So come out and vote. And let us know what you think. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I, I say that a lot. <laughs> and, and go ahead. Um. I'd just like to make a comment about the uh, uh, the dispatcher's contract. I'm certainly not against the dispatcher's contract, and I know it was negotiated under full faith and everything. 
what I'm against is I'm against COLA increases and the way that they're they're used in contracts. And I think that that's something that we as a town have to take a look at and institute some changes in the future because it definitely could save us a lot of money. That's it. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple quick things. First, I wanted to, um, I just formally want to apologize to the chair. I um, very much spoke out of turn um, during a comment that was from someone at the podium earlier. Um, I uh, took personal offense to a comment, one of the comments that he made um, due to um, some of my family members and my extended family members and some things that they've gone through. Um, so it was extremely offensive to me um, to hear some of the words that were said. If you have um, an issue or a problem with the town or anybody on it, I, I, will, I never speak for anyone on this council, but I will tonight and say that every single person on this council will meet with anybody. Um, they're always open. They're always, they always want dialogue. They're, they're always looking for conversations, and they will always answer questions. So um, instead of just wagging fingers at people um, and spewing things that have uh, no backup, um, and no proof of anything, I, I would encourage people to reach out to counselors and ask them direct questions. Um, and again, I apologize to the chair for um, sort of jumping uh, the way that I did. Um, secondly, I just wanted to quickly address a couple of the emails that I've received over the last two weeks since we voted on the budget. Um, you know, I, like I said, when I did vote on the budget, that the budget time is an extremely difficult and stressful time of year uh, to be a counselor. Um, it's not the most pleasant time. It's not um, the, the glory-filled time of being a counselor. It's not the fun stuff, but it's the stuff that we um, have to deal with and, and do. Um, some of the emails that I got made some personal references to me, and I want to clarify a couple things that I said. Um, if the budget is passed, it is not beneficial to me in any sense of the word. Uh, personally, as a single mom, um, like I told the counselors a couple weeks ago, when I moved into my house 14 years ago, my circumstances were extremely different. Um, now, being in the position that I'm in, um, if that budget is passed and my taxes go up, that's a, a huge issue for me. When I voted for the budget to go through, I voted as a counselor because I did believe that this is something that should go to the voters, that this is a subject that is so large and that there are some things that come before us that are so big that seven people should not be making those decisions. That should be something that goes in front of the town. And so that is why I made the choice that I made. Um, do I fully agree with the budget? No, I don't. Um, but I did think it was the right thing for the town, and I still stand behind that. And so I hope that clears up um, some of the misconception and some of the emails that I've received. Um, if you send me an email that engages me and um, doesn't start off by calling me names, then I will engage back with you. Um, if you start off an email by calling me nasty names or insulting me, then there's really not going to be a conversation. I don't feel like that's a conversation that's going to go anywhere. So I don't, and I, I don't have an issue. I don't respond to those. And so, um, yeah, I think that was it. Thank Fun. you. Thank you. Jim Murray. Um, thank you to Councillor Hayes. Ditto. <laughs> Um, um, when it comes to the election, I want folks to get involved, get energized. I think it's great that people are, seem to be really interested in getting out there. Um, but remember to keep it civil. Um, at the end of the day, we're all neighbors, and we all have to get along, and uh, what will be will be, and the world's not going to end. We will get through it. Um, secondly, I also would agree with Councillor St. Clair's. Uh, comments on emails also. Um, occasionally we do get people who send pretty caustic uh, emails regarding one thing or another or they don't have their facts straight. Mm -hmm. I try to attempt to answer every email and lately I've, I have to admit, I'll be the first one to say I've fallen behind because of my work schedule and whatever lately, but that being said, mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, it is, you get further if you uh, at least engage us in a constructive, if you've got some constructive ideas, I love to hear those. If you've got ideas of places where we should cut as a council, I like to hear that, uh, you know. But um, I, I would agree with Councilor St. Clair that it comes to a point, our finance committee did a lot of work meeting with the school finance committee. It's not like we just pulled this out of a hat. Um, so now it has gone to the voters, and uh, I respectfully request that as many people come up and vote on this referendum. It's pretty sad how few people vote on school budget referendum, mm -hmm. but there it is. So come vote. Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Yeah. Uh, last meeting, we talked about uh, allocating funds to uh, nonprofits. And uh, I was not very articulate. In fact, I really misstated my views on funding nonprofits, and I wanted to just clarify uh, with some brief remarks. Uh, <clears throat> I strongly support uh, the allocation of the funds that we've set aside. Uh, uh, I actually think it's the best dollars we spend. Uh, these dollars are going uh, primarily for, uh, to meet fundamental needs of low-income people in the community. Uh, I think of f when fuel and food are the things that are being provided to people, the, it doesn't get any more basic uh, than that. I, I think they're, it's also the best dollars we spend because those dollars get so uh, heavily leveraged. Uh, when we provide money to a nonprofit like Project Grace, that provides the money for the volunteer system that's in place. And there's a huge volunteer program that exists within the nonprofits that we're, that we're funding. That, that's free money. That if the town were to try and run that program, it would cost us many multiples uh, of what it costs to offer these necessary essential services to people who find themselves through one circumstance or another in need. And, and those are community goals that I think we all share. Uh, I know that we on this council share those goals. And so I, I'm very pleased. Uh, I do agree that we need to have very clear standards for that, but I could not be more strongly in favor of, of continuing that funding. Thank you. Thank you. And on to me. Um, I do have a um, couple of quick things. Um, the first one is um, I would like just to extend um, condolences to the family of Melanie Fengler. Um, as some of you may uh, remember, we had Mr. Fengler was here um, to speak recently at a council meeting. So um, again, I'd like to extend our, our condolences to, to the family. And there's that for you. And, um, so just to piggyback on some of the other comments made from some of the other counselors, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, people become passionate about the budget. You know, you, you have two sides of, a, of an equation that happens a lot of times. You, you have um, the folks that have children, and those children are in the system, and they're, you know, quite concerned and passionate about funding that education and making sure that it's really good. And then you have um, the other segment of that, which is those that, um, you know, perhaps don't benefit fr from that. Um, and, um, you know, things are tied, and they're fixed income, and, and, you know, they're very concerned about their health and their well-being. Um, I will say, um, just to kind of, again, you know, th th there is no reason to be rude. There is no reason to be argumentative. You, know, you can agree to disagree that, that you have a differing viewpoint and, and try to just move forward and, and come together a little bit. Um, I, I will say, as far as the budget for myself, um, I, I've often, you know, there's been... Boy, you know, there's been years I've voted for budgets, there's been years that I haven't, there's been years that I offered amendments, and there's years that I wanted to scream. Um, I, 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 I mentioned this in my comments last meeting, and, and I, I bring it up again because it is truly how I feel, which is this is an essential services budget. I, I don't particularly have a love or a hate of this budget. It, it, I don't have, a, I mean, I have a personal opinion, and I know how I personally will vote, 
and it'll be very conducive to my household income. Uh, but but I, I, I'm very interested to hear as a counselor what the feedback comes from this. And, and, and again, we will manage and we will move forward, whatever the outcome of that is. Um, if it moves forward, great. If it doesn't, then we will reconvene and reevaluate re and, and, and realize and understand that level services and essential services isn't what the community wants and what's the next step. Um, hopefully, if, if anybody's been hearing the buzz up north, we might get a little more money, yeah. um, which would be some welcome news. Yeah. And so that's something that we should all be paying close attention to. Um, again, it could even be maybe some substantial money. So if that was the case, we could be talking another potential referendum. Tom's looking at me, maybe another referendum to um, accept that nice amount of money. So fingers crossed. I really am fingers crossed for, for that one. Um, Boy, I've never been called a terrorist before. That's a new one, I, I will say. I've been called a lot of things through the years. That, that, that's a new one. Um, so I guess I've been there, done it, and seen it. So, <laughs> And with that, so we are on to item number 12, which is adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah.